president of the Stellenbosch University Japan Center, and I'm also a professor in the Department of Political Science here at Stellenbosch University. I'll be the facilitator for uh, today's discussion. The Stellenbosch University Japan Center is collaborating with the Embassy of Japan in Pretoria to host today's webinar, which is entitled the Tokyo International Conference on African Development, Milestones and Prospects. So it's about 30 years since the first Tokyo International Conference on African Development, also known by its acronym TICAD or TICAD, was held in 1993. That first TICAD of 1993 came at an interesting time in world affairs, given the early post-Cold War con context. And for Africa in particular, uh, back uh, at that point, where the African continent's place in the emerging international order was unclear. It was a time of growing Western aid fatigue. It was the, the time also of the rise of Afro-pessimism. So by organi organizing the first TICAD conference, Japan as a non-Western power both inaugurated a new era in its relations with the African continent and Japan signaled new intent uh, in its global diplomacy. There have been eight TICAD gatherings since 1993, with the latest meeting that uh, just took place in August of this year, and that was um, held in, Tunis, um, in Tunisia. So TICAD has always stood out from other similar international forums that have come in its wake, such as the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, or FOCAC, the India-Africa Forum Summit, uh, the US, Af US Africa Summit, and the EU Africa Summit, all of them have followed in the footsteps of uh, TICAD, but TICAD um, is distinct uh, and even unique in that it is a multilateral um, platform for engagement on African development issues. And it's also um, inclusive of a broad range of stakeholders, um, African and other governments, international and development financing institutions, as well as civil society. And also it's notable that the TICAD agenda has both broadened and deepened over the years. And TICAD is now a channel of support to Africa in the form of investments, capital investments, human resource development and capacity building, the financing of public health, um, agriculture and skills development amongst others, all of these contributing in some way to Africa's political economy. But geopolitically, we are now at a new crossroads. So when I said that um, TICAD one in 1993 took place at an interesting time, at the current moment, we're at a new geopolitical um, crossroads. TICAD eight, um, uh, the past TICAD eight of August, 2008, um, came at a critical juncture in international politics. Uh, the African continent, as we know uh, currently, faces um, multiple um, vulnerabilities. It is vulnerable to um, the various global health security and geoeconomic challenges that the world currently faces. Here to discuss with us the evolution of the TICAD process and its significance in Africa-Japan relations, we have a lineup of experts. First, um, allow me to introduce Ambassador Mr. Norio Mariyama who will um, make uh, a few opening remarks. Uh, and thereafter, we will have um, two uh, uh, speakers. Uh, we will have um, a, a presentation by Professor Shinichi Takeuchi, who is the director of the African Studies Center at Tokyo University of Foreign Studies. And um, he will be followed by um, a presentation by Dr. Katsumi Hirano, who's currently with the Institute of Developing Economies in Japan as Executive Senior Research Fellow, but Dr. Hirano has a long career in trade diplomacy, policy advice, and academia um, behind him. So His Excellency Mr. Norio Mariyama is Ambassador of Japan to South Africa. He served in um, various missions uh, in Europe, in Asia, and also um, uh, in, in other parts of the world. And um, he has been um, ambassador of Japan to South Africa since January 2019. So I hand over to Mr. Mariyama. 
Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, and the Professor Connerson, for your kind introductions. And uh, Excellencies and um, distinguished uh, speakers, and uh, recognize uh, Professor Takeuchi and Dr. Hilano, and as a distinguished um, participant. I'm very pleased to have this opportunity uh, to, uh, to tell you a very few things about um, the particularity of uh, how TICAT is unique. Um, Professor Cornelison and, uh, well, uh, explained um, how uh, TICAT is distinct with the others. But uh, I, in my eye, I would like to point it out, uh, oh, maybe five, maybe four point that for me is absolutely crucial uh, to understand TCAD. Uh, the first one is that um, this is not a bilateral framework uh, like uh, AU and uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is a multilateral framework, as the name indicates, for the International Conference on African Development. And uh, this is also and uh, have a uniqueness to be open to any kind of the partners which to participate, including the NGO. If you look at um, a ticket and the side event and that they have at, the, at this occasion, uh, you will be amazed how many people get involved. And uh, in 2016, uh, no, when I uh, participated to the, uh, the first ever ticket in African continent in Kenya, it was more than 10,000 people gathering including the, the participant organizer of the uh, side event. So this is a exclusively um, multilateral and inclusive framework. This is the first point. The second point is, is that it's co-organized uh, by Japan and UN organizations, especially UNDP, World Bank, and AUC. This is very important because uh, TICAD have a cycle of three years, and three years is a good term for elaborating a mid-term uh, program. So in my sense, the, the declarations and the uh, action plan has a meaning for the uh, participants and the co-organizers at the, um, the mid-term program for development of Africa. So um, especially the co-organizers have uh, a lot of things to think when they would like to uh, raise funds for their project. If they think about uh, ticket, it will be more, uh, how can I say, easier uh, to reach to the goal because we have already determined among the participants what we have to do from now to three years later. And the third thing is that uh, there are a strong commitment from the, uh, especially from the Japanese business, uh, not only Japanese, but um, the Japanese business is, uh, community is very committed for the ticket. And um, if you know, uh, amount of the uh, investment they have intention to invest during three years. Also, the number of the MOUs they assign at the occasion of the ticket, and especially the number of the attendance of the CEO, it is quite amazing to see uh, such a strong engagement and come from at this occasion of the ticket. So, a strong engagement of the business is also one an uniqueness of the ticket as this kind of forum. And the fourth one is that um, well, Japan do a lot of uh, uh, economic assistance in uh, any corner, every corner of Africa. And if we have a successful one in one country, we want to expand to the others. And TCAD is one of the good occasion to do this kind of uh, expansion of the good example of the good practice that we have uh, done uh, in the area. Uh, take, for instance, uh, the SHEP. Uh, SHEP is the smallholders and uh, empowerment. And uh, this was a successful one and uh, at the uh, Kenya Nairobi and at the Kenya. So we decided to, uh, to use the platform of the ticket to enlarge to the other uh, countries that were interested. And now and we do the SHEP uh, in South Africa as well and uh, combine together this um, uh, woman empowerment aspect. It is uh, well, uh, welcomed uh, by, uh, by South Africa. Uh, the fifth point is that um, it's very rare to have an international conference with a follow-up mechanism. But TICAD has a follow-up mechanism in order to assure the implementations. So this is the reason why I say the declaration or action plan is a kind of um, mid-term program because we have this uh, follow-up mechanism. So um, all those elements combined together, I, I think that the uh, TICAD is 
clearly an implementation oriented forum. So um, I stop here. I put a lot of uh, element on the table, and I, I'm quite sure that you will have and some some uh, stimulation concerning about what the uh, the PPI is doing. So uh, and I also you know, very much looking forward to the presentations of uh, two eminent um, uh, professor and uh, le lecturers today, uh, Professor Takeuchi and Dr. Hilano, and they are it's a very very uh, well, well known in Japan as a uh, as expert on TCAP and a lot of things to learn from them. So uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to uh, to start the uh, uh, the discussions, and I hope uh, for everybody a uh, fruitful uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Mariyama, for um, giving us that introduction and um, giving us um, a framework of what um, the Tokyo International Conference in African Development process um, uh, is and, and what its uh, key features um, have been. Again, emphasizing the distinctiveness of uh, TICAD. Uh, we now will um, have our two speakers um, uh, do they give their presentations. I will just uh, do uh, a quick bit of housekeeping before I, I um, introduce our two main speakers and just remind um, all participants, please, to um, keep your camera switched off. Uh, if you are not a speaker, um, then please keep your camera switched off. And also, if uh, please keep your um, your mics uh, switched off um, uh, for the duration of, of uh, uh, the webinar, unless um, when we have a Q&A opportunity, um, I'll invite you to um, address uh, your question to the specific speaker um, and you can then switch on your camera and um, switch on um, your mic to pose your question. So please switch off your camera and um, please keep your, your mic switched off. So it is my distinct pleasure now to introduce um, our first um, main uh, uh, speaker for today. It's Professor um, Shinichi Takeuchi. Uh, Professor Takeuchi is Professor at the African Studies Centre at Tokyo University of Foreign Studies. He worked for a long time at the Institute of Developing Economies, um, or IDE JETRO, um, in Chiba, uh, in Japan. And uh, he's a specialist on um, Central African countries. Uh, his current research interest lies in the state building process in Africa, and um, he does that research um, on a comparative basis, so he adopts a comparative perspective. And his um, most recent book publication is a, a co-edited book entitled African Land Reform Under Economic Liberalization. States, Chiefs and Rural Communities, which came out last year. So I hand over to, to Professor Takiwuchi. Thank you very much, um, Scarlett, for the kind introduction. So at first, let me share my screen to, uh, for, my, uh, for my talk. So can you share my, uh, can you see my? Um... Yes, we, we can, and maybe you, you, you'd you okay. like to, yes. Okay, thank you very much. So my title of uh, today is the ticket between idealism and realism. And as the uh, ambassador uh, Mariama uh, emphasized, ticket has a very, uh, normative aspect uh, uh, with the multilateral uh, framework. And on the other hand, uh, foreign media uh, are particularly interested in the Japan-China uh, relationship uh, with regard to TCAD. Since August, um, some foreign media uh, reporters uh, approached it to me uh, foreign media, including BBC, VOA, etc., and I was surprised that all of them asked me about China. Uh, and the question is that uh, is TCAD uh, sufficient for Japan to deter China's action in Africa, etc.? 
and I, I was a bit surprised. And uh, it, and as as uh, Ambassador uh, explained, the na nature uh, of jihad is uh, much normative and complex. Um, but uh, it is also true that uh, China is a very important factor uh, with regard to TCAD, but particularly recent one. So today, uh, today's my talk is uh, showing uh, that TCAD have been wavering uh, between idealism and realism um, in tracing back its history and looking back um, what is happening, TCAD, and uh, international politics around it. Uh, if I could just if, just uh, uh, interrupt, uh, and um, so I th at the moment we're seeing your last slide. Uh, so if it's possible to move to the first slide um, and then um, to advance then. Uh, Maybe uh, so. Maybe in that case, it it it's better to share your, on your side. Maybe my I'm lost in um, my the control is not so good. Okay, good. So if I could uh, ask you to to unshare, and then if I could ask um, our administrator Lydia to share on on her side, and if you could then indicate Professor Takeuchi as you go along. Um, to advance. Sorry for the inconvenience. No problem at all. So we always um, we've become accustomed to the technical glitches here on on these uh, these virtual platforms. So just one moment. Okay. There we go. Uh, thank you very much. So um, my title is Ticket Between Idealism and Realism. So next slide, play, please. Yeah, uh, Ticket uh, tends to be understood in the context of Japan-China relationship. And undoubtedly, undoubtedly, the China is a critical factor, uh, but uh, Considering uh, the TCAD only in relation to regional rivalry between Japan and China, it uh, seems superficial. And uh, the nature of TCAD is much complex, much more complex. And uh, in my uh, talk today, I'd like to show how TCAD is wavering between idealism and realism. So, next slide, please. And uh, as the ambassador emphasized, a unique, uniqueness of TCAD is multilateral framework. And a number of countries, including US, EU, China, and Russia, have summit with Africa. Uh, these are basically bilateral. But TCAD is uh, unique because it is provided with a multilateral framework and co-organizes uh, UN, uh, UNDP, World Bank, and African Union Commission, and its objective have, has been consistently discussing together with the stakeholders about the whole range of African um, development. And so TCAD is uh, characterized um, by normative um, aspects. And uh, next slide, please. And normative and idealistic nature of TCAD was clearly shown, um, particularly in the first TCAD in 1993. And this uh, conference was conceived as an intellectual conference and any pledge of aid was issued. It's very particular, it's uh, only a discussion was the objective. 
And background of this uh, conference was that uh, Japan uh, was urged to design a new policy towards Africa. And in 1990s, Japan became a top donor. And as a top donor, uh, the country, uh, Japan needs to have a new policy. And uh, in 1980s, Japan was criticized uh, from the international community to have a close relationship, close economic relationship with post up, up with upper with South Africa and the apartheid regime, uh, meaning that Japan's economic relationship with uh, South Africa was uh, very strong in 1980s, and it was uh, this economic relation that the international community problematized. So in 1990s, uh, after uh, to thinking about the new policy towards Africa, um, Japan need to think about how the country deal with a new South Africa and new Africa. And also uh, in post-Cold War era, uh, the, there was a strong international pressure for contributing to global challenges. Uh, so Japan uh, was urged to think about a uh, new policy, uh, new international policy, new diplomatic policy, and particularly for the policy towards Africa. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, this uh, supremacy of idealism and normative thinking was particularly uh, was strong uh, in TCAD's in early stages. And TCAD 2, a second TCAD, which was held in 1998, well, uh, in this TCAD, uh, serious debates were, were made on peace and conflict in Africa. And it, is, it was clearly uh, corresponded to the uh, to the report uh, submitted uh, to the UN Security Council uh, report uh, written by Kofi Annan on the African conflict, and uh, under this uh, inference, uh, the peace and conflict was uh, a very important matter in TICAD 2. And uh, of course, uh, as TICAD 1 was uh, held by, um, with uh, under strong idealism uh, or normative uh, thinking, uh, the institutional legacy was clear. And also we need to uh, point out the spirit of the times, uh, meaning that in the late 1990s and the first part of the 2000s were a very uh, normative thinking among donors, uh, very strong. A poverty reduction uh, was the uh, that country's primary objectives. And on the basis of this uh, normative objective, uh, the important um, international uh, objectives, uh, including uh, Millennium Developing Development Goals, uh, was uh, set uh, was launched, and also donors uh, committed uh, a very uh, normative agenda uh, on Paris Declaration in two thousand five, and. Um, and also, Japan's uh, revised ODA charter in 2003 uh, was also a very normative one, uh, which was based on the uh, uh, human security. And uh, peace building was the one of the pillar, important pillars of this uh, Japan's ODA charter in 2003. Uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, however, uh, 2000, uh, the year, the decades of 2000 was very turbulent one. And there was, uh, uh, there were strong, uh, significant changes uh, in internal and international politics. Uh, internally, uh, in Japan, uh, economic stagnation um, was lasting in, in, in the decades. Um, it means uh, uh, it, 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 uh, as a result, the volume of ODA, uh, Japanese ODA, uh, continued to, uh, to reduce. And also uh, the pressure from the business circle uh, strengthened. Uh, business circle uh, required that uh, ODA, uh, official development assistance, uh, should be useful for the activities. Uh, this was the um, uh, strong request uh, from the business circle. And then, uh, on the other hand, internationally, uh, international political changes are also um, significant. Uh, first of all, uh, rise of China was very clear. And uh, China uh, rapidly developed uh, its relations, uh, economic relations uh, globally. And in particular, uh, China-Africa relations uh, high, uh, rapidly developed uh, during this decade of 2000. And uh, with regard to the bilateral relationship between uh, China and Japan, uh, uh, in parallel with China's um, economic and political um, growth, uh, the bilateral tension uh, with, with Japan also grow, grew. So uh, the territorial disputes uh, became uh, intensifying in, in this uh, decade. And globally, uh, another uh, change in, in global um, um, a global level was the reducing importance of ODA in general. Uh, because of the non DAC uh, new donors and also the uh, development or growth of private sector, uh, ODA uh, itself uh, reduced uh, its importance. Uh, with regard in comparison with the previous decades. Next slide, please. And these changes um, made the, the uh, these changes influenced the nature of tickets, and it, it caused uh, the realistic turn uh, in tickets. And um, particularly since TCAD 4 in 2008, uh, business promotion came to the fore. And the, some politics uh, targeting China uh, has been included uh, in TCAD. Uh, free and open Indo-Pacific strategy, uh, which clearly uh, targeting China, was um, introduced uh, in TICAD 6 uh, in 2016 uh, by the then Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. And also uh, the last TICAD in, in this year, uh, Japan pledged $30 billion, but uh, it clearly uh, be conscious with the China's commitment in 2000 made in 2021, uh, which was $40 billion. And also uh, a realistic turn uh, in Japanese uh, diplomacy 
can be also observed in ODA policy in general. And uh, Japan uh, uh, um, set a new uh, ODA charter, which was called Development Cooperation Charter in 2015. And in this uh, ODA, new ODA charter, uh, the, the importance of national interest uh, was emphasized. So it's, uh, uh, of course, there is a continuity, but also change in comparison with the previous ODA charter uh, in 2003. Uh, next slide, please. But still, uh, it is important to know that idealism and normative aspects uh, remain important in Tikas. This is very important. Um, we can see in Tikas a wide range of commitments. Uh, Tikas is about the economic development. So its focus is uh, shall be economic development. But uh, always TCAD has a three pillars. One is economic growth, second is social resilience, and third one is peace and security. And uh, the objective of TCAD, which is discussing together with the stakeholders about the whole range of African development, this objective remains the same until today. And as a result, the commitment in Chikad, Tikad is uh, very broad. In case of Tikad 8, uh, the commitment includes uh, startup assistance, green growth initiative, quality infrastructure, contribution to global fund, and also support for African led efforts toward uh, democratic. Uh, uh, democratic principles. So uh, it includes uh, very overarching uh, topics uh, uh, with, with regard to the development. So next slide, please. And TCAD has often been criticized uh, by analysts of its tragic and ambiguity. In, in terms of strategy, diplomatic strategy. And the commitments are always overarching and include not only Japan's preference, uh, such as quality infrastructure, but also issues that the country, Japan, has no particular comparative advantages over other donors, such as assistance for democratic principles. But in thinking about this ambiguity, uh, we can understand that the inclusiveness derives from the multilateral nature of the conference. Inclusiveness uh, is um, the uh, source of the ambiguity or ambiguous uh, strategy. The com conference is if the uh, conference is inclusive, a uh, conference became complicated and costly. But it's advantageous for Japan because it's, it gives legitimacy to the main organizer. The multilateral um, institution, multinational multilateral framework uh, gives legitimacy to its organizer. And my argument is that uh, Japanese government uh, prefers embracing the legitimacy uh, to aggressively pursuing its uh, main, uh, its own agenda. So my argument is that this is uh, the reason why the TCAD uh, had been wavering uh, between idealism and realism 
as it will be for the moment, uh, continue to wavering between the two norms. So thank you very much. Uh, this is my last slide. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, this is the end of my talk. Thank you so much for um, a very interesting and um, informative presentation, Professor Takeuchi, uh, uh, giving us an uh, insight into the evolution of the uh, TCAD process and um, what the underpinnings had been. And your key argument is, is that it has um, oscillated between, um, it had some normative um, foundations or normative grounds, but um, uh, also some strategic um, ambitions and that TCAD basically has has been an oscillation um, uh, between um, normative ideals and principles as well as strategic goals. Uh, we have opportunity for some uh, quick um, questions to Professor Takeuchi. Does anybody, um, would anybody like to, to pose a, a question of clarification to Professor Takeuchi? We have uh, a, a few minutes uh, for that. And also you can, um, I've indicated that you are um, most welcome to post questions and comments in the chat function. Um, and uh, um, I will then uh, also pose those questions, Professor Takeuchi. So if any um, audience member would like to pose a question, um, or there's also later after Dr. Hirano's talk, there's also opportunity for, um, for Q&A. But Professor Takeuchi, maybe I could I could just um, uh, ask uh, ask you if if you could give us some overview of the the internal um, context within the, um, the 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 internal institutional context um, uh, in terms of the the ministries, the government ministries in Japan, and and who are the the key advocates and had been for uh, for the TCAD and what that means in terms of Japanese politics. Uh, as far as I, I understand, uh, of course, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, MOFA, is the main organizer of TICA. But uh, uh, at the same time, um, Ministry of Economy and International Trade, METI, is very um, also a strong uh, stakeholder. Uh, this is the specialty of Dr. Hirano uh, in terms of trade and investment. Uh, METI is uh, 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 main uh, main stakeholder, but uh, I think T Dr. Hirano will talk about it. The FDI from Japan is uh, stagnating, so um, I mean the new strategy will be necessary. Uh, how to promote the business? Uh, orientation towards Africa. This is, uh, I think, very difficult uh, questions for, for Japan for the moment. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Takeuchi. Yes, so you've given us a nice bridge to Dr. Hirano's um, talk next. And um, allow me to introduce uh, Dr. Katsumi Hirano. He's the Executive Senior Research Fellow currently at the Institute of Developing Economies, or IDE Jetro in Chiba in um, Japan, which is a, it's a government um, uh, research and policy um, uh, organization. Dr. Kirano has been engaged in African studies and development studies for more than 40 years. We, we were fortunate today to have two of the, um, the top African studies specialists uh, in Japan with us uh, to tell us about TICAD. Uh, Dr. Hirano holds an MA in economics, which he obtained at Waseda University, and a PhD in global studies, which he obtained at Doshisha University in Kyoto. He was the vice president of the Japan External Trade Organization, uh, or JETRO, until 2019. And he was that for, he was, was part of JETRO for a long time. Um, he, uh, before joining um, uh, IDE and, and JETRO, um, he worked as a special assistant back in the early 1990s um, and before in the Embassy of Japan in Zimbabwe. And um, also during the 1990s and, and early 2000s, 
He was um, a visiting research fellow at the South African Institute of International Affairs, the University of the Witwatersrand, and so on. Uh, he has published a lot, um, both in Japanese and English, about um, Africa's um, politics and African development. Um, a book in English that, that I can um, highlight is Japan and South Africa in a Globalizing World, A Distant Mirror. And that was published uh, as a co-edited volume um, uh, in 2003. Dr. Irano, I hand over to you and we look forward to your talk. Thank you so much, Scarlett. It's a fairly kind introduction myself and uh, long, long years ago, including. And uh, I'm going to share the, my presentation. Yes, it is. <laughs> Actually, myself, uh, uh, already a little bit introduced by the Scarlett. I was uh, engaged in the ticket process from the ticket hall. And uh, this time, the ticket rate and among this very limited participant number uh, I uh, did is a moderator of a panel discussion on the business forum. So that I went to the Chinese. But uh, this time the ticket is, uh, I already said it is the smallest one uh, from my experience in the ticket. Uh, it's a definitely by the COVID-19 situation. <clears throat> so the, our government is a strictly limited to the number of the participant. <clears throat> Oh, sorry. But uh, uh, ticket eight, uh, in my observation, and uh, uh, I think there's an international interest, there's a more focused on the international politics beforehand. So the situation on the politics before the ticket eight is, uh, uh, I think there's no need to say to for everyone, a United Nations General Assembly resolution on the aggression against Ukraine. And at the moment, 26 African states are staying or the absent. It is a little bit surprise for the international venue, especially for the West. So after that, uh, Russian uh, foreign ambassador Lavrov has uh, visited African country and uh, just followed by the President Macron of France uh, and also the Brinken of the uh, State Secretary of the United States. And also the UN ambassador, uh, US ambassador to the UN uh, visited African countries. So the very, very uh, uh, intense diplomatic competition on this situation. But uh, unfortunately, just before the one week of the ticket, uh, our prime minister Kishida was infected with the COVID-19. Uh, so the uh, ticket eight is an inevitably uh, shrinking uh, from that situation. So the number of the participants of a state from the African continent, 47, and uh, this time they said don't, didn't invite it to the non-African countries. Uh, last two ticket is uh, around the 50 non-African countries uh, uh, invited, but this time this is uh, li uh, limited to the only African country. The 47 numbers is uh, come from because uh, uh, our co-organizer AUC is now that they suspended some countries uh, because of the coup d'etat. So the 14 number of the state participant is uh, no problem. It's uh, just an agreement with uh, AUC. But the uh, uh, problem is uh, only nine president attended. Uh, it's uh, inevitably is the absence of our uh, head of uh, state, Mr. Kishida. So the just seen like as a ministerial meetings. And uh, uh, even in such a situation, uh, we enjoyed as a good collaboration with uh, President Makisano of Senegal, the chairman of the uh, African Union uh, currently. But uh, I must say there's a very limited diplomatic effect. Uh, while uh, in the uh, Chinese declaration, uh, we uh, share the uh, respect of the sovereignty and also serious concern to the Ukraine, Ukrainian uh, situation and uh, uh, serious uh, need to the maintenance of international law. That is, a, that is a very good effect. But uh, uh, to compare to the uh, uh, other ticket, form of ticket, I must say the ticket date 
is a very small side, down, downsided, and also the very only the limited effect. Uh, but Tikat itself is uh, uh, at least is the uh, original stage, uh, just explained by the Professor Takeuchi. It's uh, more, more uh, uh, focused on the international politics. That is, uh, uh, that is uh, Japanese tried to the establish, the, if by putting so, the new identity of, of the Japan just after the end of the Cold War. So they say this, uh, uh, there's a, no more is an ideological conflict. So the, uh, the, they, they, they are what seen to be is the uh, only biggest uh, problem uh, left in the international community is uh, uh, poverty deduction. So Japan uh, would like us to uh, establish ourselves as a sincere and a trustful partner. Dr. Irana, you um, seem to have muted yourself, or some somebody might have muted you. Uh, let me see if I can. Or Lydia, is it possible to unmute Dr. Irano? Um, I, I think he muted himself, but let me just check one moment. Okay. okay. Ah, it's, yes, so, so it's okay. You can also you're welcome also to put your camera on while you're doing a presentation, Dr. Irano. Camera on. Yes, please. His camera is yeah. on. We can see it. Yes. Oh, okay. I <laughs> already on. <laughs> okay. So you, you can't hear it from the beginning of my presentation. Yes. yes clear, yes, loud yes. and clear. It was just now that. Um, yeah. <laughs> was muted. I'm sorry for the everyone. So I think it's better to start again. We we start heard every. We heard everything, and um, so uh, I think if you go to the third of yeah, so we up to the third and third slide. We heard everything. Third slide, this one. So yes, so that that was, and then the fourth slide. I think you moved on, and and you were talking to that slide. Okay, okay. I'm very sorry for that inconvenience. So the, let me start again from the this slide. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Eto. So the. Anyway, the ticket eight is uh, the smallest ticket in its history. Uh, number of the participant state from the African continent, because at this time there's a uh, non-African country is not invited. Last ticket uh, seven is uh, around the 50 non-African countries was invited, but this time is uh, only limited to the African country. The number of the African participant is a 47, but this number is uh, uh, agreed between the Japanese government and the AU. Uh, so the rest of the country is uh, now is suspended in the AU uh, due to the coup d'etat. So the problem is uh, uh, ticket eight enjoyed only nine president attended. Uh, so, but uh, it is inevitably because this, uh, our head of state, Mr. Kishida, wa uh, is absent because of the infection with the COVID-19 just one week before. Uh, but uh, uh, we have this uh, uh, Chinese declaration in which we, co uh, we share the common understanding uh, of the respect of uh, uh, national sovereignty and also serious concern to the Ukrainian situation and uh, a need to the maintain the inter international law. So that is a definitely the uh, diplomatic effect, but uh, uh, generally speaking, as a ticket date uh, uh, result is uh, uh, not so enough as expected. So uh, uh, it's that kind of a situation is uh, generally to shift to the international interest of the ticket uh, from the international politics to the business aspect. The business forum is organized by the JETRO. Uh, is uh, a number of attended 300, around 300. It's a very small number uh, because the last ticket we enjoy is uh, much more than the uh, 10,000. Uh, so, but uh, uh, 
we have the 34 African company and the 53 Japanese company was allowed to the participate in the business forum by pick a date. And also end of the forum, uh, 92 business MOU, we have to uh, sign. Uh, but, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> but the ticket itself is already uh, explained by the Professor Takeuchi as a, at least that the originally is an international politics scheme. Uh, that is, uh, in, in one word, I said this is a Japan's try to the new national identity of the Japan after just after the end of the Cold War. As a, a sincere and a trustful partner for the economic development to solve to the last and the biggest challenge for the international community to the po poverty reduction. And also a uh, characteristic of a ticket, the sort of the Japan's effort is expanded globally, not limited to the Asian region. That is a ticket starting point. And uh, uh, in my observation, this uh, biggest uh, outcome of the ticket process, I think this uh, OEC DAC new development strategy uh, is uh, mainly organized by the Japanese government at the year 1996. Actually, this uh, strategy is provided the basement MDZ and SDGs. And this ticket uh, is a more shifted is a trade and development. Uh, my talk is uh, just uh, supplementary for the Professor Takeuchi's explanation. Uh, because the uh, uh, United Nations reform effort was uh, frustrated in 2005. And uh, another big element is a debt cancellation scheme. Uh, it's around this uh, century term. In my last three calculation, uh, Around 70% of the debt, cancelled debt, is a Japan's one. That cancellation mean is uh, uh, Japan lost away for the ODA loan to the Dipro entity in Africa, and ODA loan is a still is a very important uh, tool for the Jap uh, uh, Japan's uh, development cooperation, mainly to establish the economic infrastructure. Now there's a uh, that sort of the uh, co uh, contribution uh, done by the uh, Chinese uh, corporation. So the, at that year, uh, in the circle, uh, there's a very uh, severe debate was deployed uh, among our uh, Japanese uh, circles, uh, whether the ticket process will continue or not. But uh, after that, uh, ticket uh, process will continue, uh, will be decided to continue by the shift to the focus to the trade and development. From the uh, changing of the nature of a ticket, uh, uh, Professor Takeuchi has already mentioned, uh, METI during the ticket process. And I think is uh, that exemplified in the 2004, there's a big conference that called is a ticket AATIC. AATIC mean in the Asian Africa Trade and Investment Conference held in, in Tokyo. Uh, for that conference is uh, uh, MOFA and METI. MOFA and METI <clears throat> is a, a, a corporate each other. To, to get in the success of by AAT. And from the ticket for held in 2008, the business sector at first we joined the ticket. So let me uh, briefly uh, uh, say about this uh, uh, South African uh, connection. Uh, ticket six and seven. Uh, South African financial sector is uh, one of the main focus of the Japanese uh, uh, business circle. Uh, several Japanese banks have, uh, have the business MOU with the South African 
financial sectors. And this time the ticket date, uh, Emma observation, uh, Saso is a definitely the focus for the Japanese business circle. And the uh, uh, panel discussion which I organized, also the uh, representative of Saso, uh, I invited. And the main uh, uh, topics is uh, uh, clean uh, hydrogen energy. And that is a, one of the techno technologi uh, technological front for the uh, future Japanese uh, economy. And the other thing is uh, Japanese uh, M&A activity in Africa is uh, concentrated in the South African business circle, exemplified the NTT and the dimension data, and NEC and the uh, Zio. So the still South Africa is a big uh, topic for the Japanese business circle. But uh, Take, uh, Mr. Take, uh, Professor Takeuchi already mentioned is uh, Japanese economic performance in Africa is uh, very stagnated and the trend to degrees. This graph showing is uh, export volume to the Africa. Uh, current situation is that China is uh, working alone. And uh, briefly speaking, I think it is uh, 25, around 25% of the total importation in the whole Africa is a came from the China. And uh, Japan is uh, exportation is uh, gradually decreasing now. And investment scene also the uh, uh, we have is a very disappointing figure. Uh, we had the hit peak of the Japan uh, FDI toward Africa year of the 2013. Uh, but after that, is uh, uh, volume of FDI is uh, on the decreasing, and also the share of the Africa uh, in the Japan the global stock is also decreasing. Current trees are around the 0.3 percent. Uh, but uh, our counterpart, for example, the uh, China uh, or the US or the UK, is uh, around uh, this. Uh, ratio is a 2.5 percent is almost the same of the African share of the global GDP. So the uh, I always uh, try to persuade the business uh, uh, circle in Japan. Uh, we can at least double of the uh, investment side uh, to other than Africa. Uh, but uh, uh, I should say. Uh, uh, Japanese uh, manufacturing now to deploy this uh, very globally, for example, the, in Toyota case, uh, just less than the half of the whole Toyota automobile production is uh, performed is outside Japan. And also the uh, investment, uh, especially in case of the Africa, is uh, 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 made by the uh, project company is registered in the Europe, Netherlands or the France. So the uh, Japanese company's uh, investment toward Africa is registered in the Europe. So such kind of the situation we have, but the uh, uh, company basis is a sort of the very disappointment of the figure we should have. And uh, and also uh, let me add it to the uh, Japanese currently Japanese export is a mainly composed of the automobile and industrial materials and the machinery tools. That sort of the uh, main export item for Japan is uh, uh, to the manufacturing manufacturing sector in the world. Uh, uh, so the inevitably is a main customer is uh, China and the development, developed countries. The sort of the uh, Japanese economic composition is inevitably to the EU's a sort of the disappointed the figure uh, in relationship, economic relationship between Japan and Africa. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, I, I must say, uh, the, for example, the Japanese investment toward Africa is a hit, some sort of the shield for the Japanese economic capacity. 
which uh, much really depend on the manufacturing sector and the resource uh, procurement business. So that we should explore the new way or the new business possibility to open the new era for the economic relationship between Japan and Africa. Uh, briefly summarize is a current economic relation between our two sides. Uh, I think this uh, Japanese economic performance is uh, much concentrated in the uh, automobile industry. Uh, so uh, our uh, relationship is uh, much concentrated in the South Africa. Uh, it means it's a losing, losing Japan uh, lost is a new business opportunity. Uh, that is uh, uh, made Japan's economic presence in Africa uh, trend in decline. So that my talk is a meaning. Uh, it is a Japan's problem, our problem, not Africa's problem. Uh, many Japanese uh, businessmen uh, sometimes said as an excuse, as an African situation, for example, the governance or the conflict uh, is made is uh, uh, it's made impossible for the Japanese companies to uh, deploy the business activity in Africa. But if that uh, excuse is true, uh, other countries' uh, business uh, is also should on the decline. But uh, Japan is uh, uh, ostensibly decline trend. So the, it's a definitely, I think, this is uh, Japan's problem. So we must uh, open some new possibility, I said. This graph showing the balance of payment of uh, Japan. Currently, uh, uh, Japan is uh, uh, depend on the income balance, not trade balance. Uh, we are, uh, especially after the COVID-19 situation and uh, uh, some decoupling uh, tendencies, uh, uh, China and the US, uh, Japan cannot uh, get this hard currency from the trade ship. So the, now the, uh, our peer uh, for the uh, <clears throat> international economic activity is a camp from the income balance. It means it's a uh, uh, profit come from the, our investment. So the Japan and the Japanese business circle is very enthusiastic to the expand to the outward investment, especially uh, this century. Uh, that <coughs> that curve is uh, showing that. But uh, still, we cannot reach uh, if what C is uh, uh, FDI size to the ratio in the GDP. Uh, still, uh, we cannot catch, we didn't catch up with the world average and also the much behind of the average of uh, developed countries. So that we should expand further. Currently, uh, this graph is showing the FDI flow, not stop. Uh, Used to be the 2019, Japan is the world's biggest investor, but now this uh, US is a recovery very rapidly. Uh, but still, uh, we uh, managed to the international top uh, uh, ranking uh, investors. So the, our more, more uh, enhanced our act, uh, uh, effort to expand our investment uh, activity. And also the uh, uh, one of the characteristic of the Japanese outside investment is uh, much concentration in the several countries, that is, is uh, China and the US, and also the ASEAN country. The three groups is uh, more than the half of the whole Japanese investment volume. It means is our exposure uh, investment market in the Europe and Africa especially is a very small percentages uh, as we enjoy. So the I including the ticket eight is a discussion and the recently 
I always uh, uh, said we should establish ourselves as an investor. So we call this Investor Japan. Uh, because it's, uh, Japan has the world's biggest pension fund, because it's, uh, we are the very old and the aging society, and also the biggest venture capital, that is a soft bank. Uh, soft bank venture capital, we, uh, it's called is a, a soft bank uh, vision fund, is registered in the UK, but uh, that is a Japan originate uh, companies and Japan originate fund. It's a definitely the biggest uh, venture capital in the world. Uh, they enjoyed the more than the 700 billion US dollars. So that's uh, potentials of uh, Japan as an investor uh, must be the more utilized to the establish the gain in the international presence in Japan, not limited, only limited in Africa as a more global. So for that purpose, Japan need a more globally balanced portfolio. And uh, that means is uh, more investment share should come to the Africa. And another thing is uh, uh, for that purpose, uh, Japan the business circle should accommodate the global human resources uh, to uh, observe and utilize its uh, investment know-how to the uh, area of which Japan now is uh, uh, not enough uh, business information. It means is uh, we di definitely need to the non-Japanese directors, non-Japanese executives in the business sector. That's a sort of the uh, messages, I think, uh, we can enumerate it to the uh, opportunity of a ticket eight business forum. Uh, and the uh, ticket uh, nine, uh, next time will be uh, held in the Japan. Uh, uh, so the uh, I I have no idea there's what kind of the setting uh, will be uh, employed for the ticket nine, but uh, uh, at least is a business uh, relationship. Uh, so that kind of the point uh, will be focused uh, to restore is the Japanese business economic. Uh, presence in the African continent. Thank you very much. Thank you very I'm much. Okay. Sure. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Irano, for that very incisive analysis and, and again, also very, very informative. Um, so now we have opportunity for um, Q&A. And um, so there are questions that had been posted in the, um, the chat function. I'll, um, the questions I have been directed, um, I think, uh, at uh, Professor Takeuchi, but I think they're relevant to both Professor Takeuchi and uh, Dr. Hirano. So um, if it's okay with the two speakers, I'll, I'll post the questions to, to both of you. Uh, so there's first of all, there's a question by Patrick Muhirwa. And um, Patrick asks whether TICAD is organized in line with Japan's ODA program. So um, if I could ask Dr. Hirano and uh, Professor Takeuchi uh, to give the idea about that question. Um, maybe, uh, uh, may, I, may I answer the question? From, because uh, Patrick Mushiro, I know him, <laughs> he's a, he, uh, our student, so let me uh, answer very, very briefly. Um, the answer is, uh, of course, yes. Uh, TCAD is organized in the line with ODA program. And we can say TCAD is the main uh, pillar uh, of the Japanese ODA policy for uh, towards Africa. So the answer is uh, obviously yes. And maybe uh, I think, uh, um, yeah, um, um, TCAD is all, 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 almost um, ODA policy itself. So yeah, the answer is very clear, yeah. Okay. 
Dr. Irana, would you like to add to that or um, shall we move to the uh, the next question? Excuse me, is, uh, please uh, repeat is your question. Uh, if TCAD is organized in line with ODA program, Japan's ODA program. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, that's your response. <laughs> very, <laughs> very brief. The second question is from uh, Chi Chieji, um, who asks, um, in light of current global realities, what are the prospects of TCAD and are there new technical areas that should be incorporated into TCAD that will benefit Japan beyond legitimacy and that will also benefit Africa generally? Mm. So um, given current geopolitical um, the current geopolitical situation, what are the prospects of TCAD and what new technical areas should be incorporated into TCAD? Uh, so perhaps I could um, I could ask Professor Takeuchi to to reply to that first. Yeah, if uh, um, I take this question, um, emphasizing the part of beyond legitimacy, uh, of course, the most uh, Japanese target uh, has been the business. Uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, again, uh, 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 in addition, if we take the, uh, the emphasis on current global realities, maybe the answer would be how to uh, consider the um, the global Japanese Japanese global uh, diplomacy uh, and uh, how to relate to uh, the TCAD. Uh, I think uh, I myself consider that the legitimacy uh, uh, that Japanese uh, diplomacy benefits from the TCAD is uh, in uh, very strong diplomatic tool in itself, uh, particularly uh, recent, considering recent um, turbulent global politics, the legitimacy uh, profiting from the TCAD is, I think, a great asset. So uh, I myself would like to emphasize the importance of the legitimacy that TCAD uh, can make sure. So th this is my brief answer. Thank you. Dr. Irana, would, would you, could you like to um, respond? <clears throat> if I talk about uh, the business uh, dimension, uh, ticket encouragement is quite important for the Japanese business uh, because it's, uh, uh, I should say there's a Japanese business circle currently the lack of the uh, sufficient uh, business model and the business technology to survive to the new situation of the uh, uh, global economy. Uh, I already mentioned about this uh, several MOU that uh, Sasso with uh, Japanese companies on the clean hydrogen energy, and that is uh, quite important to, to survive to the Japanese automobile sectors, uh, exemplified as the Toyota. Because uh, globally, China and uh, Germany is uh, more drastically uh, changed its automobile industry from the engine technology to the elect electricity vehicle. But uh, uh, our automobile sector still believed is the engine technology is quite important to enjoy the longer distance uh, transportation and the more safe and the more sustainable so the, from that point of view, technology, techno, technologically speaking, in the uh, clean hydrogen energy is a very, very important, crucially important. And uh, uh, in my observations, a sort of the uh, idea what share is at least in the Sasso, and I hope is uh, shared with uh, uh, South African business circle in general, and also the. Uh, BOP business technology used to be 1950s and 60s in the Japanese business is uh, well accounted to the sort of the business model. But now 
a uh, very few, only few Japanese company keeps a sort of the uh, business deployment. So we already ha still have this uh, uh, African, West African seasoning. It's a come from the Ajinomoto Corporation, the one of the Japanese food uh, companies is uh, 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 deployed. It's a very wonderful BOP business. But uh, uh, that sort of the uh, business is also, it must uh, expand it uh, in our society. And also the, uh, as the same direction as the water business and the uh, agri business, uh, which is uh, uh, one of the business, uh, most expected business field in the 21st century. Uh, but uh, Japan still don't have is the uh, companies and uh, uh, companies who measuring such sort of the business. So the, we should establish uh, urgently as a sort of the uh, new uh, dimension uh, with technologically and the management basis. Thank you. Thank you very much. So there, there are questions, um, some very good questions coming in. There's, there's one by um, Mr. Uh, Nakamura um, uh, from um, uh, a, a Japanese diplomat. But before I ask um, his question, um, because I, what you just mentioned now, uh, Dr. Irano, um, uh, sparked some some questions on my side uh, concerning the automobile sector, and you mentioned that Japan. Its presence in Africa um, in the manufacturing sector is, is the, la the largest in, in the automobile um, sector. So you also worked um, a, a long time in um, uh, South Africa and you know the, the conditions uh, very well. Um, so Japan invested in um, the automobile sector in um, Southeast Asia and, and that was a, a pathway for many Southeast Asian countries towards economic growth. Um, it incorporated them into global value chains um, and so forth. Uh, given that um, uh, the automobile um, industry is such a big uh, uh, focal point of uh, Japan's presence here in, in South Africa, and the automobile uh, sector is also the largest um, manufacturing um, component in, in South Africa and the largest uh, employer in manufacturing. What opportunities uh, do you think there are for, for, uh, uh, for further expansion or deepening and then also uh, an obstacle um, uh, has been localization um, and how to overcome that obstacle from the South African side. Mm. Uh, currently used to be is the automo Japanese automobile builder is uh, much concentrated in the South Africa and the very few presence is uh, outside South Africa but uh, in African continent. But the country to expand gradually to, for example, Ghana uh, or the Kenya. So the automobile industry is a definitely the leading industry of the Japanese economy. Uh, so the uh, industrialists of that sector have a long lasting and a very strong wish to establish is uh, assemble a value chain in a uh, within an Africa. And uh, it's uh, uh, not meaning of the only limited in South Africa. Uh, if the trade set is FTA uh, settlement is uh, more getting the more completely, uh, so the Africa wide value chain is uh, one of the uh, wonderful solution uh, to establish is a well automobile industry in Africa. So uh, not only the Toyota, Nissan or the Honda, uh, all that they proclaim is they will have the good uh, trustful partner uh, to uh, assist to establish is a value chain. So the parts builders or in Africa and also the distributors. Uh, so that, that is a, one of the wonderful scenario for the Japanese economy in the relationship both of us. Thank you. Um, there's a question from um, Mr. Tembo Just Justice, who I know from um, uh, being at uh, uh, Tufts last year. Uh, Tembo asks, realistically, uh, and I think this is a question for you, Professor Takiuchi, realistically, why is the China-Africa bilateral relationship a threat to TICAD? 
Uh -huh. uh, thank you for the question. My understanding is that, uh, first of all, um, China, the threat of China uh, in, in Africa uh, is sometimes uh, all tend to be overemphasized. And uh, we, we need to be careful uh, not, uh, not to overemphasize the threat. Uh, there are um, uh, many dimensions that the cooperation uh, would be possible. And uh, secondly, but the, there are uh, some threat. Uh, for example, uh, the United Nations reform uh, that Japan would like to uh, pursue in 2000, in the 2000, was um, uh, failed uh, mainly uh, because of the influence of the China's um, uh, uh, China's I mean, opposition uh, over African countries. African countries were uh, clearly um, influenced by the China's attitude, uh, and so uh, this would be diplomatically. Uh, problem, and it, it, it can be considered as a threat. But uh, always, you know, uh, 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 it, it is undeniable that uh, there is a regional rivalry or a regional tension between the two countries, and the tension can be exported to African continent. But uh, uh, the relationship is much more complex than the simple rivalry, and uh, there are multiple dimensions, and and it is important to uh, to know that there are also uh, many dimensions to, that can be um, uh, cooperated uh, between the two countries. Thank you very much. Um, Professor, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Hirano, a question by uh, Mr. Hiroki Nakamura. Um, you mentioned that the new Japanese identity after the Cold, that there is a new, or there was a new Japanese identity after the Cold War. In your view, what is this identity composed of? Actually, the other year, just after the 1990s, uh, Professor Takeshi already mentioned that Japan is the uh, uh, biggest uh, ODA provider for the uh, world. Uh, so the other tier, because it's, uh, we don't have the uh, military intervention power, so uh, development intervention is uh, almost only one uh, measures. Uh, to contribute to the international society, especially for the global south. Uh, from that uh, point of view, uh, the situation uh, just after the end of the Cold War, uh, it is uh, quite natural to the Japanese and the Japanese government think that uh, Japan uh, be able to, to establish ourselves as a very good development partners. So the measure is also the ODA at the DIA, uh, not so much uh, focus on the business intervention. And uh, uh, more than 30 years ago, uh, Japan uh, seemed to be have the more room to expand its uh, development cooperation effort. Uh, that is the uh, ODA law, uh, which was is, uh, uh, already appearing as an Asian country uh, China or the Taiwan or the Malaysia, Indonesia. But the uh, uh, year of the 1990s, uh, that uh, uh, loans was a repayment uh, period. There's a very huge number of the repayment enjoy at the year. And the uh, government or JICA uh, uh, was seeking uh, to the uh, new opportunity to put in the Japanese ODA law uh, for the further contribution. So such sort of the domestic area and the international uh, situation is uh, made, uh, uh, I think, is uh, try, try, try to the establish the new identity as a development partner. 
Thank you very much. So um, there are two further questions which I will just briefly mention, but we do also need to, to wrap up and um, end today's discussion. Um, the question by Rohana, who mentions um, Japan's use of solar power, which could be of benefit for South Africa. And then uh, a, a comment by um, Victor Songa Musi Musiwa, um, who says that um, he thinks that or he, or he thinks that 90 percent of African social economic challenges can be solved by technologies that are more than 50 years old. And Japan is a global leader in many of these technologies, including logistics um, and and so and and so on. Uh, so uh, thank you for uh, all of the questions that that were posed and that um, uh, got our discussion um, further. Uh, I'll end off with a um, question to both you, Professor Takeuchi and uh, Dr. Irano, and um, ask what your wish list is for TCAT 9. Uh, hmm. uh, my, my, yeah. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, question. Um, uh, I myself, I, I studied long uh, in Africa, uh, but uh, honestly speaking, it is very recent that I discover the TCAD interesting. Uh, for the long time, I was not so interested in this diplomatic process, but uh, recently I found that uh, this normative aspect of TCAD uh, should be, I mean, re-evaluated. Re uh, and the legitimacy I, I told in this seminar is, is a very great asset for Japanese uh, diplomacy. And myself, I studied particularly the political problem in Africa. And uh, I need to, uh, I should admit that Japan has been relatively reluctant to be engaged with the African political issue. But uh, TCAD is a very good frame uh, for Japan to think about uh, this uh, very difficult, uh, I must say, difficult African politics. But uh, this TCAD framework is uh, very important and uh, valuable uh, precisely for this reason. So uh, I think even if sometimes TCAD is uh, accused of its ambiguity, but I I think this ambiguity positively. So, so TCAD 9, uh, I, I think Japan uh, should uh, think about African political issue too. Thank you. My town. <laughs> mm, so someone said in the Japanese society is a ticket nine might be the last ticket. So at first, I would like to continue the ticket initiative and the sort of the uh, uh, effort to the uh, transform our society and our economy to the more internationally or globally process to maintain. But the uh, international situation is uh, much more complicated now. And uh, we don't have the capacity to foresee is uh, even in the three years later. And uh, our our region in the East Asia region, also the situation is uh, very severe. For example, the last night is uh, 20 missiles came from the North, North Korea to our areas. And the uh, military and the geopolitically uh, very dedicated uh, situation now we have. And uh, we don't uh, think this uh, query of the future situation even in Asia, but also this a globally. Uh, but uh, I think our Japanese and uh, South Africans uh, keep its intention uh, to maintain its a more stable and peaceful international order. Uh, if the sort of the effort will keep kept, I think it's uh, uh, we can uh, have the enough capacity to. 
uh, think about is the ticket to nine. And, uh, and also to some paper I uh, uh, proposed is that ticket to nine uh, might have been held in the Osaka, uh, not Yokohama, like the last one, because uh, uh, same year in Osaka, uh, Japan hosted the International Expo, Expo at the tier. So the all African country already invited and they opened the pavilion that is exhibition in Osaka. So that sort of the uh, good opportunity uh, might be utilized to the more energetic ticket uh, at the tier. Thank you very much to uh, both Professor uh, Takuchi and Dr. Hirano. I would like to invite um, Ambassador Mariyama uh, to uh, give a closing comment. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I would like to say thank you very much for Professor Takeuchi and Dr. Hilano for the very interesting and uh, uh, analysis about the ticket itself and the ticket aid. You know, um, ambassador and a diplomat in general is uh, the most, the last person to be pessimistic. And so, and I am also have an idea about what is a ticket aid, and my view is not uh, uh, is very optimistic because, and as uh, Dr. Hilano mentioned, uh, we have this time a, a participation of SASO, which is a very important thing for the future of uh, ticket itself. Because this time, my observation the ticket has emphasized, succeeded to emphasize about the climate change and about the uh, and a green and a hydrogen and a green ammonia as well. And uh, combined together and uh, with what the Japanese company can do at this stage is to uh, create a kind of um, a supply chain of hydrogen through Af from Africa uh, to the other world. And in this sense, I think uh, what we can see at the, the Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and uh, the freedom of navigation with them more and more important than now because it, and Africa will be the head for this at the starting point of the supply chain. So in my view, and a ticket nine, and a, as a Dr. Ilano mentioned, have the opportunity to be held uh, with the uh, world expositions. World exposition, Japan will focus for the future life and for our future life is inevitably carbon neutral. But the carbon neutral, what kind of technological uh, well, improvement what the carbon neutral is necessary. We need to think about hydrogen. But in between, we also have ammonia. And everything can combine together, make more and uh, stronger the relation between uh, Japan and Africa. So uh, next rendezvous uh, to uh, ticket nine. I don't know exactly when it will be held. Well, we are not decided yet, I think. But then a, a kind of synergy will for sure be uh, generated and, uh, between those two very important uh, event in Japan in 2025. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to all our speakers and to uh, Ambassador Mariyama. So uh, this has been a, a high profile engagement and high impact uh, engagement. And uh, I would like to thank uh, the speakers once again um, for the opportunity. Uh, we are going to ask um, the uh, audience members to complete a little questionnaire. I think, Lydia, we will send that questionnaire um, uh, afterwards, but I think you can also please post it now in the um, in the chat. And this um, is only now for me um, the opportunity to um, thank everybody for the participation, for the inputs and for a very rich discussion. Until the next opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Goodbye. See you.
Okay. Hello. Yes, are you still there? <laughs> yes. Thank you. And yeah. I'll just stop recording. Okay.